All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm here with Melinda McCrossan, who's the teacher librarian at Arlita K-8 School. And this is my In the Spotlight video series for Portland Public Schools, where I interview different people across the district, instructional leaders, administrators, trying to get a sense of what's going on out there. So my first question is, Melinda, give us a little introduction about yourself. Tell us how you got to be where you're at now at Arlita. All right. Well, um, I kind of took a different path to get into education. My background was in radio, TV, and film. And when I got out here, I couldn't get a, couldn't get work in my field. So, um, long story made short, I ended up in public access television. And I worked at Pacific University for a television department there for a while. And so I had a lot of background in both in training lay people. Um, with very little technical knowledge, as well as doing a lot of technical writing. So I'm 57 and grew up in the era where girls were not encouraged in math and science. So I went down the humanities path and never even knew I had an aptitude for this. It's probably why I'm so passionate about it, because I kind of found my passion later in life when it was a lot more open. And I had a lot of men in television who were um, thrilled to show me how a studio was engineered, how they soldered it together. And, and the most important part was I started in the analog era. So the digital thing is like cake and ice cream. Um, because I grew up teaching and doing di uh, analog editing. And so it was one step at a time. You goof up. You had to go all the way back. It's just like the electric typewriter, which, or, well, I grew up with a standard typewriter. But, the, um, you know, you goofed up on page two, you rewrote the whole paper. So um, it was an interesting entrance because it was the heyday of the National Endowment for the Arts, Artists in Residency. So I started working with North Bend Film Study Center in the mid-1980s, mid and I loved it. We did great kids, PSAs, um, public service announcements, and I got pulled into teaching hypercard programming and computer basics. I was really fortunate. My first job um, um, in television Portland was through the Center for Urban Education, and one of my, we had Mac computers back in the day. One of my trainers had actually been one of the Apple trainers, um, and that's who taught me everything I knew when the whole system came on a 512 floppy disk. Um, and so I was really fortunate and stumbled into some really good places. NEA's training in terms of how to teach art uh, was incredible. I've never had anything like that in graduate school or anywhere. Um, it was ex exceptional training. So I worked for TAG both for Portland Public Schools and MESD back when the students were bus to the centers, and I taught television, but I had a big me media literacy component to it, where we would dissect the media and then reconstruct, and so that was part of it, too. So I loved hypercard programming, I have to admit, um, and, and I still do. There's a warm place in my heart for it. It's just so simple and straightforward. Um, so that's kind of how I came into this. I got hired at Maplewood to set up a Mac lab of all these different machines that have been donated and then network the whole school with AppleShare. And again, that was in the late 80s. And I guess it's kind of amazing. I didn't think about it as amazing. But, oh, yeah, we can do that and kind of hooked up all this hodgepodge equipment. And then I had a principal who said, I can't pay you what you're worth. You have to go to graduate school and get a master's so that you get paid what you are worth. And that's actually how I ended up in education, so that I could um, be a certified teacher, which was great because my master's in is, is in education. And mm -hmm. I feel that that's been a really important part of myself in my job is that I know the curriculum. Um, K-10 on classroom endorsed to teach in any multiple subjects. Uh, so I'm really, really familiar with the curriculum. And I've always tried to tie the you know, take the curriculum first and then say what tools best suit this curriculum rather than looking at some new tool that got rolled out and go, wow, that's cool. Um, how am I going to teach curriculum with that? So I've always um, really given honor to the education part, and that's where I start. And then I move out to technology. 
um, and I don't think I would have done that if I my bat masters had been in anything but education. Great. So that's a long story, huh? <laughs> <gasps> a lot of good experience, Melinda. Yeah, that you have awesome. Okay, so the next question I have for you is what's one innovative or awesome way that teaching, learning, and technology is being used in your school? Um, you know, I thought about this, and uh, we're really lucky we've got a lot of, uh, and I'm looking forward to the show, um, because we've got so many tech people that I think are really doing innovative things, so I was like, well, what do I do that I know no one else does, and I've gotten a lot of compliments on it, and, um, you know, when you come out of the media industry, it's a team sport. You never produce media by yourself, you just don't. And so that culture is changing, but I'm used to collaboration. And education isn't necessarily as much as that's what we strive for, set up for collaboration. So this, um, what I do for cyber safety, and I, I even hesitate to call it safety, uh, cyber safety, I call it cyber awareness. Um, because I don't want to come on with the stranger danger, this is for middle school curriculum. I want them to be able to hear me and accept it and not have it be preachy. And so I have selected the videos that we watch, but I pull our school psychologist in, and she runs the discussion group with us. So when we're talking about rights and responsibility, it's our school psychologist who runs that group, and then those kids are really aware of who in the building can help them, because we've had that discussion. And it's been led by someone, I feel, um, that's her specialty. And I, I was always kind of nervous leading kids into that, because as you know, when you work with kids, the stories come out, and I didn't know if I was ready to deal with that as a classroom teacher. And so it's great, because then they are familiar with who is that lady in the building, and they know that she's someone they can turn to. So when I've talked about that, I've had a number of schools, Roosevelt, um, William over there was like, that's a great idea. Great. What's one challenge or need in your building that you see right now? Well, from the last meeting I was at, equipment. <laughs> so I'm given this uh, job of teaching technology, and all I have are 29 computers locked into the wall here. Um, and so it, it, we're stuck in such a hard place because, um, you know, the, we're schizophrenic, first of all, with mobile devices. We need to be teaching it, but yet we've got the off and away. And I, my firm belief, even with video, is if you teach kids um, um, what to do with technology, they don't spend time trying to figure do all the things they're not supposed to. And I think that's where we really need to take a leadership role and be aggressively marching them into this digital age. Um, and that's why I love my curriculum so much this year, because it was mashups. And we really have gotten away from analog, and we've gotten away from that team production of video, and now it is a solo act uh, where you can produce direct and act uh, all in your same um, production. So I think we need to be leading the way rather than looking at the kids and going, I don't know how to do this. Um, and that's always been the way with technology. I've learned enough to be able to get started, but I always look to my kids to teach me what I don't know and to take it further. And that has definitely happened in Scratch with one of my seventh grade students last year who is so far beyond me in Scratch and sets up these challenges. And then I make him report back so I can learn from what he's doing. Cool. But um, it's one of the reasons I like Scratch, too, is because you can teach the basics to the kids who get that, get that. But the kids who've never been exposed to that can take off. And um, I found in teaching technology, a lot of the students who do super well in my class are ones who are not necessarily doing well academically in language arts, social studies, math, science, and it just kind of becomes their thing. Um, and, and, and it's great because where they feel like they don't have that thing, uh, they, so they're doing continuity transitions, I'm teaching citation, and all this stuff, but because I'm using uh, technology, um, they love it. That's awesome, and I love how you described, I like how you used the word mashup with yeah. what you're doing. I think that's awesome. So the mashups this year, and I appreciate you saying that, because um, my goal was not so much to teach art, but teach them 
how to cut out so the electronic collage is kind of the first thing we mash up but then I get to talk about right and responsibilities where does that image come from mm -hmm. I mean, have you do you have permission fair use permission on this so I'm a, a huge believer in Creative Commons um, yeah. all my kids now even when they reports for other teachers they're now going to Creative Commons comments for um, copyright cleared images and then they tell me and I'm like oh you know it's awesome That's so great. the mashup I get to talk about the responsibility of using other people's art but also becoming an art producer and um, that's so important to tell these kids that it isn't just, you know, um, YouTubing the fight on the playground in high school, that, you know, you can really become an amazing artist. And so I show the mashups of the songs that have been created, mashed up from all over the world yeah. for the street musicians. And I think you showed that the one time. Um, but I want those kids to get out of their box about what technology is and all the teachers saying and parents saying, don't do this. I think right. it's our sole responsibility to say, look at this, let's go. And so the other mashups we're doing, we're doing a GIF animation. Um, and we're using our mashup skills um, to learn how to do that. And then I'm ending with uh, mashup in music where they're writing a song in GarageBand. They have to record their voice, alter their voice. But the whole thread, not formally, but is that you can take all these bits and pieces and put them together and come up with something new, creative, um, mm -hmm. inspirational. And, and again, the rights and responsibilities that come with that if they're grabbing stuff off of a commercial television or uh, off a dating site. I show this one mashup. Um, where they had songified uh, this gal talking about how much she loved cats. And, you know, it was funny, And but then I talked about, man, if that had happened to me, it would have destroyed me. So there again, through these, all these mashup threads are the rights and responsibilities. I'm Great. going over my 15 minutes, aren't I? <laughs> That's okay. Another question we have for you here is, what's one professional article, book, or person oh. you recommend to follow? Yeah, I brought it. It's in my back okay. room. <laughs> it's The Geeks Shall Inherit the Earth. And it's cool. not necessarily a technology book, uh -huh. but it That's talks awesome. about the kids on the fringe and how they are the creators in the world. Those are the inventors of the world. And it's really the social, as my daughter used to call them, the soch, or the popular kids who are really the ones who suffer in the work world out there because life is not according to the social constructs of the high school when you're the prom queen uh, when you get out in the work world. So I'm loving that book. I haven't gotten too far into it, but it deals with all the geeks and the nerds and the lunchroom fringe, and it's just been really inspirational for me to um, be reading that as I go through trying to deal with, you know, all this teenage, I love middle school, I just love middle school because they're so yeah. open still, but you can get stuff in, you can get stuff in even though on the outside they don't look like it's soaking in. <laughs> so that again is The Geeks Shall Inherit the Earth and that's yeah. by Alexandra um, Robin. Yes. Okay, great. Last Thank question, you. Melinda. Is there mm -hmm. anything else you'd like to add? Um, well, I, I talked a little bit about, um, I also teach library, and um, I love it because I actually have a graded class called library and a graded class called technology. And it took me, this is my third year at Arlita, to get that class with the library on the name. But I really feel library has changed uh, tremendously. And um, in library, I'm still teaching researching, writing, reading, um, organizing skills um, in that sort of thing and so it's funny when my kids come in and they go I have you twice and I go no you have me for two different classes <laughs> and so uh, but in the library class I would just like to say um, for teaching citation in a school where kids had never heard of citation I was like oh boy <laughs> how am I going to do that but I did um, I used big, huge labs, and we, they ended up creating a poster. So where the movie credits go for the mm -hmm. cast and characters, there's citations in there. Cool. And they had to use an encyclopedia, uh, digital. Um, I also am a firm believer in teaching the digital um, 
uh, dictionary thesaurus that comes on the Macs. It's a very powerful tool for English language learners and kids that aren't confused about words. And so they go into that. And um, and they have to have a photo and they have to cite where they found their photo and so we do these movie posters and the kids love that project and I'm like can we do that again and I'm like going oh my gosh I taught citation to the point where my kids are going can we do that again uh, <laughs> I, I, and you know I do the happy dance at home because my friends of course are like what huh yeah and, and those are some weird kids no no it's a great day and so uh, we do six word memoirs and that's where they do their writing component and then I have them turn those into iMovies mm -hmm. and so that was a great project last year in library because the eighth graders ended up creating their own eighth grade promotional video oh, and cool. this year because they've had another year with me I've got a team doing the video this year and so they're doing all the shooting all the editing and so just that little project got the kids again who wanted to take it further you know all the way to the promotional video so we did uh, six or memoirs they had to write and then they had to the story together and again copyright cleared images uh, and all of that and, mm -hmm. and then the last one was um, readers theater podcasts and again where you take just the dialogue and then we record and I love that class because my my kids who are like oh, I'm not gonna read I'm not gonna say that and they are kids who struggle with reading uh -huh. end up doing the best job I had this group of boys who um, you know were just always driving everybody crazy and I told them they had to do this and they did um, Pokemon uh. and it was the funniest thing because they did the voices and they did this whole chapter out of Pokemon and it was it was beautifully done it was hysterical and there again these boys turned around and said can I take your class again I'm like going oh my gosh these are the, the kids that were sitting there going I'm not going to do that and I get a little bit of pushback on the garage band because they have to say a sentence and duplicate part of that sentence mm -hmm. and alter their voice. And they're like, I won't say anything. And it's like, you guys have got to start talking to people and looking them in the eye. So library this year is different. We're doing digitized portfolios. And again, I'm teaching organization how to organize all that information that they need for doing reports or and they actually do a small digital resume. Their research are in careers, and I'm using the state job sites uh, to look. And they have to do, uh, and so for they have to find out what the average wage is, what kind of school they need. And there again, I have a kid who hates language arts, and they've been doing all these personal surveys on their skills and attributes. And th that was my goal in that class: is every middle schooler could I walk out of my class identifying things they were really good at in life um, through this library thing and that when they meet strangers for college fair career fair they can look them in the eye so my final actually was not technical they had to shake my hand look me in the eye introduce themselves and tell me one good thing about themselves and they had a digital portfolio with a couple paragraphs about what they were good at so they start focusing on the good instead of all that stuff that's going on and again if we don't lead that charge that's where it's going to stay and it's really important we lead on <laughs> well thanks Melinda I all think right. some awesome exciting things at your school and in your program Thank you very much. I can't wait to hear more about it. And all my work, all my student work is always posted on my website. So if you want to see or hear any of it, it's there. And so if, you, if people just search for Arlita School. Yeah, there's actually a coffee shop called Arlita Library. So it's um, right. if you find the Arlita School site and link yeah. to that, you'll get there. All right. Great. All right. Thanks a lot, Melissa. Thanks so much for joining us. Yep.